In this video, I'm going to explain how to identify oxidation number or oxidation state. Oxidation number is number of electrons that an atom gains or loses to form a chemical compound. If we take a look to sodium chloride, we know sodium is positive one in sodium chloride and chlorine is negative one. So in this compound, if we compare sodium neutral atom with sodium cations, sodium lost one electron. So its oxidation number is positive one. And chlorine gain one electron if we compare it to the neutral atom. And oxidation number, it is negative one. But how to identify oxidation number? There are six rules. If we follow this six rule, we can find oxidation number for any atoms. The first rule, it says in elements, atoms, they always have zero oxidation number. Like when we have O2, oxidation number for each atom of oxygen is zero. When we have iron, oxidation number is zero. So as long as we have in their elemental form, oxidation number should be zero. H2, hydrogen. For each hydrogen atom, oxidation number is zero. P4, oxidation number is zero. F2, fluorine. Oxidation number for each atom of F2 is zero. The second rule is for monoatomic ions. Oxidation number for monoatomic ions is equal to the charge of ion, like Iron 2 positive oxidation number is equal to positive 2. Iron 3 oxidation number is equal to positive 3. Oxide anion oxidation number is equal to negative 2. Oxidation number for sulfide anion is equal to negative 2. Sodium cation positive 1. Fluoride anion, negative one. So the charge is equal to the oxidation number. The rule number three is about fluorine. Fluorine in all compounds have negative one oxidation number. If we have F2, it is regarding the first rule. We have zero because it's elemental form. But in all other compounds, fluorine is always negative one like HF, then oxidation number for fluorine is negative one. If we have CF4, oxidation number for each fluorine atoms is negative one. If we have OF2, oxidation number for each fluorine is negative one. It doesn't matter if it's ionic compound or covalent compound. Oxidation number for fluorine again is negative one. For rule number four, it's about hydrogen. In all of the covalent compound, hydrogen atom has positive one oxidation number. So whenever we see a compound, hydrogen should be positive one. But there is an exception. If we have a binary compound between hydrogen and metals, then hydrogen will be negative one. Like if we have sodium hydride, if we have calcium hydride, potassium hydride. Because we have combination of metal and hydrogen, then oxidation number for hydrogen will be negative one. In any other compound, we have positive one, like we have CH4. Oxidation number for hydrogen atom are positive one. In water, oxidation number for hydrogens are positive one. Oxidation number in acetone, for hydrogen, it is positive one. The rule number five is about oxygen. For oxygen atom in compounds, ionic compound and covalent compound, most of the time oxidation number is negative two, like carbon dioxide, like water, like alcohol. So oxidation number for each oxygen atom in these compounds are negative two. But there are also some rare exceptions. For peroxide compounds like hydrogen peroxide, oxidation number for oxygen is negative one. Or sodium peroxide, oxidation number is 
negative one. So put it in another word. If we have O2 to negative, it is a peroxide anion. And oxidation number is always negative one. There is also another type of oxygen compound. We call them superoxide. There isn't too many examples for superoxide, but we have potassium superoxide. The oxidation number for oxygen in superoxide is negative one half, and it is O2 negative one. But these two superoxide and peroxide, they are exception, and we don't see them normally in the compounds. Rule number six is very important and it will help for calculation of oxidation number for other atoms. This rules it says that the sum for oxidation number of all atoms in a neutral compound in a molecule is equal to the zero and the sum of oxidation number for whole atoms in polyatomic ion is equal to the charge of that ion. Let's see what that means. For example, when we have water, water is a neutral compound. It doesn't have charge. The subtotal for oxidation number of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, it should be zero because it is a neutral compound. But sum of oxidation number for nitrate anion, it should be equal to negative one. So if we have oxidation number for nitrogen and three of oxygen, and we add them together, the answer should be negative one. By using this rule, we are able to calculate oxidation number. Let's have a couple of examples for these rules to see how we can find oxidation number. For first example, I would like to calculate oxidation number of nitrogen atom in ammonia. So ammonia or NH3, it's a neutral compound. So subtotal of oxidation number should be zero. So for nitrogen, we don't know what is oxidation number. So I just write nitrogen. But for hydrogen, we know it should be positive one. But we have three of hydrogen. So three of positive one. So we have one nitrogen and three hydrogen. And the answer should be zero because some of oxidation number in neutral molecule should be zero. Then we should do the mass. Nitrogen plus three is equal to zero. Then nitrogen is equal to negative three. So oxidation number for nitrogen here, it is negative three. The next example, I would like to find oxidation number for carbon in methane, CH4. We do the same thing. For carbon, we don't know what is oxidation number. So we have one carbon atom. We know oxidation number for hydrogen should be positive one. So we have four of positive one and the total should be zero because this molecule is neutral. Then we have carbon plus four is equal to zero. Then carbon should be negative four. Let's find out what is oxidation number for nitrogen in NO2 negative one, nitrite NiO. The solution is same. We don't know what is nitrogen, so we just write nitrogen atom. There are two oxygen atoms in this ion. So we have two and the oxidation number for oxygen most of the time is negative two. If in the question it doesn't tell us what type of oxygen we have or what is the oxidation number, we always should assume it is negative two. So one nitrogen and two of oxygen and the total should be equal to the charge of that species, negative one. Then we have nitrogen two times two Negative four is equal to negative one. If we add four to both sides of this equation, four and four, they cancel out. Then nitrogen is equal to positive three. So oxidation number for nitrogen here, it is positive three. Let's find out what is oxidation number for phosphorus in phosphate anion. Again, we have phosphorus. Then there are four oxygen and each oxygen is negative two, the answer for this sum, it should be equal to charge of anion. So P phosphorus minus eight is equal to negative three. Then if I add eight to both sides of this equation, then phosphorus will be positive five. So oxidation number for phosphorus here is positive five. For next example, 
I would like to calculate oxidation number for chromium atom in dichromate anion. There are two chromium atom here. So we should write two of chromium. And there are seven oxygen. And each oxygen is negative two. And the total should be equal to the charge of anion. So we have two of chromium. 7 times 2 is negative 14 is equal to negative 2. If I add positive 14 to both sides, then it will be positive 12. So 2 chromium is equal to positive 12. And if we divide both sides by 2, then chromium is equal to positive 6. This is oxidation number for chromium atom. So chromium here, it has coefficient 2 because there are two chromium atoms in the formula. And the last example, let's find out oxidation number of sulfur in sulfuric acid. So in this molecule, there are three different atoms. Hydrogen, so we have two of hydrogen and hydrogen always is positive one except binary compound with metals. Sulfur, we don't know. And for oxygen, there are four oxygen. Each oxygen is negative two. This compound, it is a molecule. It doesn't have charge. So the total should be zero. Then we have two plus S. Four times negative two is negative eight is equal to zero. It means S minus six is equal to zero. So sulfur oxidation number is positive six thank you for watching this video for watching more video please subscribe our youtube channel